has got his hat on. Hip, 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 hooray! The sun has got his hat on and he's coming. Hip, hip, tally ho, Jules Guides here, in which I wander around London and tell you fascinating facts about our city and also about our beautiful language. So today I'm going to be talking about where certain expressions come from. For example, the expression above board, which means something that's perfectly legal and allowed. And the reason I'm in Leicester Square is because over there is the Hippodrome. Now the word Hippodrome actually comes from the Greek. Hippos meaning horse and dromos meaning race course because a, a Hippodrome originally was for horse racing. Um, but then later on it became adopted by general entertainment venues as meaning a general place for entertainment. And that's why uh, Hippopotamus is actually uh, a river horse. Hippos meaning horse and Potamus meaning river. The Hippodrome actually opened in 1910 and it attracted acts like Charlie Chaplin and then Stevie Wonder, Frank Sinatra, even the Jackson Five performed there. And what I hear you cry, does this have to do with being above board? Well, in later years, the Hippodrome turned into a casino and uh, my friend reliably informs me that it's a good place to get a drink after hours. But the other good thing about it actually is that you can just go in and place even very small bets. So if you're not a complete gambling addict like me, you can just go and put, uh, you know, two pounds onto the roulette wheel. But the phrase above board actually comes in relation to people playing poker because players who were being accused of cheating might be stacking the deck or something underneath the table, um, otherwise known as the board. So players were requested to keep their hands hands physically above the board so that people could verify that they were playing the game fairly. For example, one might say, that bloke who sold me that dodgy looking theatre ticket in the middle of the street, he looked a little bit untrustworthy, but don't worry, it was all completely above board. Speaking of theatre tickets, if you're intending to go to the theatre in the West End, you can actually get discounted theatre tickets if you come here on the same day as the actual performance. So you can just come to this nice, cute theatre ticket box in the middle of Leicester Square and uh, they sell discounted tickets. Those are completely above board. Jump into your sun bar, hip, 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 hooray, the sun has got his hat on and he's coming Splendid. Well, speaking of theatres, if you've seen my other video about Covent Garden, you will have seen all about the Theatre Royal Drury Lane, which is over here. There's been a theatre on this site since 1663. During the Revolution, they, uh, Oliver Cromwell, who was a bit of a mean old so-and-so, and he closed down all the theatres. So King Charles II, when he came back, he decided to open up all the theatres again. And he had a mistress called Nell Gwynne, who used to sell oranges here in uh, Covent Garden. And then she got a job as an actress here at the Theatre Royal Drury Lane. There was actually, I understand, a tunnel that led underneath the theatre and straight up to the, the pump, where, which was a tavern in those days where you could uh, have rooms to sleep in and he had to uh, carry on his affair there with her. But why do I tell you all this? Well, because hundreds of years later there was a fella called John Dennis who was a playwright and he wasn't very good um, and he came out with this play called Appius and Virginia and he had developed this excellent means by which to create the sound of thunder which was rattling some balls around in a bowl. Anyway his play didn't last very long and so they took it off but nearby they started showing Macbeth which also had thunder in it and they used his version of creating the sound of thunder rattling these balls around in a bowl and so he said well damn their eyes they won't show my play but they steal my thunder and since then we've got this very handy phrase. Yes. We have no bananas. We have no bananas today. Now, did you ever hear the expression towing the line? Uh, you often hear about politicians having to tow the party line, as in uh, doing what their uh, leader tells them to do. Uh, essentially, towing the line means obeying certain rules. Oh, well, he didn't want to play in goal, but he had to tow the line, otherwise the coach of the team would have dropped him. In the 19th century, it literally meant putting your toe next to a line, as in uh, at the start of a race. Now, debates in the Houses of Parliament can become quite heated. So, on either side of the House of Commons, they've got two red lines situated two swords lengths apart in order to stop them from getting at each other's throats. But because of this association with uh, members of Parliament putting their toes behind this line, we more commonly associate the phrase towing the line with Parliament. Everybody! Now, did you ever call someone a son of a 
gun. Well, I've called people a son of quite a few things in my time, but uh, the son of a gun actually is a pejorative term, a derogatory term to put someone down. This is the Golden Hind, actually a replica of Sir Francis Drake's ship in which he circumnavigated the globe in 1580, I think. He was unofficially backed by Queen Elizabeth I, but she did encourage him to try and put an end to any uh, Spanish interests if he could. In fact, uh, it's actually called the Golden Hind because the person who did officially sponsor Sir Francis Drake was a fellow called Sir Christopher Hatton. I'm actually going up to Hatton Garden later. And Sir Christopher Hatton's uh, family crest was a Golden Hind, which is a kind of red female deer. And you can see it on the front of the ship there. And one story I heard was that when the ships went off on campaign, they would invite uh, their wives, girlfriends, or indeed prostitutes onto the ship in order to have a bit of nookie before they left. And so they'd have to make space in order to do their business with their ladies. And so they'd manoeuvre these guns out of the way and then that's where they'd perform their acts. And then when they'd disappear off on campaign, they'd come back nine months later and hey, they've got a baby, son of a gun. here down the bank side this used to be the sort of no-go area it was quite dodgy and they had loads of brothels and uh, bear baiting pits and cock fights and uh, I dare say dog fights and uh, if there was one dog on top of the other and they appeared to be winning he'd be known as top dog and the one underneath he'd be known as uh, the underdog the one who was losing and the other thing they had down here was theatres and uh, of course Shakespeare's Globe, although this is only actually a replica. It's all made using the original techniques and plans. I think it's all wooden pegs and green oak or something, the, uh, the, the, the timbers. The first thatched roof in London since the fire of London because uh, we like to burn things down in this country and uh, the original Globe burnt down after a performance of King Henry VIII. But then they rebuilt it. Uh, eventually it was completely torn down during the revolution. Originally Shakespeare had part ownership of a theatre over in Shoreditch. But their lease ran out. They claimed that they owned the building and the landlord said no, he owned the building. So they broke down the whole theatre in the middle of the night and they shipped all the timbers across to this side of the river around 1598 I think it was and they built up the new theatre just in time for the first performance of Henry V. What's he that wishes so, my cousin Westmoreland? No, fair cousin. If we are marched to die, we are enough to do our country loss, etc. I'm wasted here. What happened to my agent? Bastard must have died. But uh, you could get 3,000 people inside the original Globe because they had a lot of people standing and then they'd pass around this little bag on the end of a long stick and then they'd take all this money from the people in the standing areas but the people who had a bit more money they'd have boxes and stuff so they'd have their tickets waiting for them at a special office right by the entrance and that was known as the box office as if you care. Show me the way to go I'm tired and I want to go to bed Now this is Hatton Garden, famous for being the centre of like, Britain's diamond industry, I think, diamond trade. Um, uh, and just over there is where one of the biggest jewellery heists in British history took place over Easter Bank Holiday weekend a few years ago when they actually discovered that the people who had done it were a bunch of old age pensioners who had left a trail of evidence behind them. And just down here in Hatton Wall is one of my favourite pubs where they have a rather splendid pub quiz on Mondays, which I won once. And um, you can play eccentric bar games like shuffleboard or something once like that. Upon a time, there was a tavern where we used to raise a glass or two. I remember how we laughed. Each away. player has four pucks, red or blue, two players, first to 15 point wins. Well, there's no one else here to play, so I'll have to play on my own as usual. That's quite good fun. It's quite a good game, actually. It's like a bit like curling. 
Now, have you ever been told to mind your P's and Q's? This means to you know, be a bit careful and don't say the wrong thing or behave badly. We still serve beer by pints here, and we used to have quarts as well. As a quart is, I think, two pints. And if you're a better man than I, you could try drinking a yard of ale, which they've still got above the bar. I don't think they actually serve them though anymore. But anyway, pints and quarts were measurements of uh, quantities. And um, in the old days, if you got a bit too rowdy in the pub and they wanted you to stop throwing your beer around, they'd tell everybody to mind their pints and quarts. Mind your P's and Q's, if you don't mind. Cheers. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy my films, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Or if you want a uh, private guided tour of London, you can head over to my website, julesguides.com, where you can find out more about me or even leave a donation uh, via PayPal or become a patron on Patreon. Cheers.